It was really fascinating. They were very clever. And, and, and of course, my PA and Mike and, and various other people within my office uh, were very much aware of what was going on, my agent. Um, and I, of course, was in complete oblivion, um, had no idea whatsoever. So it was clever that they did it when it was our slimmer of the year. So there we were presented the third place, presented the second place winners. And then the first first place lady came on who'd lost, I don't know, something like 10 stone, extraordinary. And looked, they all looked beautiful. So I sort of presenting her with her award and it was also lovely. And then suddenly there was this gasp, this sharp intake of breath. And I thought, oh my goodness, has somebody fainted? Uh, and so anyway, I carried on and then... I just saw at the corner of my eye something happening and there was Michael Aspel walking through towards me and it was just so exciting. It was unbelievably exciting. Well, I mean, talk about an adrenaline rush. Oh, my life. It was extraordinary. And so having looked after the girls and, and we had something to eat and et cetera, um, then I was put in my, in my car. I, I had my own driver and he drove me to the studios and um, and then I was sort of secreted off to a room um, and my daughter had, <laughs> had not uh, unknowingly, obviously unknowingly to me, taken a whole load of stuff from my wardrobe for me to choose, choose what I wanted to wear for this momentous occasion. Um, and in the end, I actually wore the dress I'd worn for the presentations. And I've still got it today and I still wear it today. But before that sounds like I'm showing off, it has been slightly let out, I have to admit. Anyway, so when it's time to actually go onto the stage and I think, oh, my goodness, this is just the most exciting thing ever. And you stand behind these two doors. When you watch the programme, it all looks terribly swish, doesn't it? But you stand behind these two sort of um, pieces of plywood that are held together with two by four. Um, and and two men are sliding them out to the side as, as you suddenly walk through. Um, and it was just the most fantastic moment. And then I sat down. And then, of course, there's people on the stage opposite me. And there's also people at the side of me. And opposite me were all these people that obviously were very much part of my life. In the sheer panic of the moment, of the excitement of the moment, I didn't know who anybody was. I was blind to recognition. And then one by one, they popped into my brain, started working. It was, it was unbelievably exciting. And then, of course, you don't know who's coming up next. And this awful moment when they describe who's coming up ne next, and you're expected to guess who it is. And there's a bit of you thinking, oh, crap, I want to be awful if I forgot, if I didn't recognise them. And, and it was all these amazing people that came on. There was Cliff Richard and there was Terry Wogan and there was Richard and Judy and, and, and so on. And the interesting one with Richard and Judy was we had, that he hadn't got that film. So I couldn't see what they were going to say. So I just had to react in a in a way that was positive because I'm sure they weren't going to say anything negative and just saying what a privilege it was to work with them, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for the many years that I did. It was lovely to have people like Denise Robertson and Brian Turner from This Morning because I've been seven years on This Morning and I knew these people really, really well. And that was that was very special. And then, of course, right at the very end, Steve Chalk from the Oasis Trust, who we had been a supporter of. At the end of the whole thing, you then go to a party and uh, and there was an amazing, amazing buffet um, and, and a free bar for everybody. I mean, there must have been 100 people there. And it was incredible because... It, it was just joyful, but it was a bit like going to your own memorial service because everybody who you would hope to go to your funeral was there. And I realised this. Um, and so when this has got uh, underway, I actually, I'm only a little, I stood on a chair in the middle of it, everybody. And I, I just, I think I must have clapped my hands or shouted or something. And I said, can I just talk to 
you all. I said, I just want to thank you so much for coming. This has been the most exciting day I could ever, ever imagine in my life. And please don't go before I come and say to you, because, you know, some of you I haven't seen for 40 years. My, I mean, my boss of 40 years previously was there. Uh, Mr. Bordoli, and I thought, well, I must go and say hello to you. I realise, and I'm a huge thank you to the TV company for doing this and, you know, doing it all about my life and so on. I said, I, I, I'm so grateful. But I'm very much aware of the fact that they were making a TV show. And as a result of that, there were lots of people on that show who were saying lovely things I appreciate enormously. But they weren't the people who really made my life. You are the people that made my life. And that's why I really want to speak to you. And, and that was something that I wanted to get across because, yes, I have met Cliff, of course. And I've, of course, I've met, you know, I say, of course, but I have met, you know, uh, uh, Terry Wogan. Um, but yeah, so the, these people were not really part of my life, but it made a better TV show. <laughs> it was such a thrill. But afterwards, I was the adrenaline kept on for about a week, and my daughter, it, I said, I, I, I said the next morning, I said I didn't sleep a wink. He said, "Good, because now you know what it's been like for the rest of us." But I slept really well. She said, <laughs> "I mean, I remember this is your life being on the TV when it was Eamon Andrews, um, and it was just incredible. I loved it." Um, and I remember the very first, when I first started my business, which was in 1972, and I started my very first classes and they were of great success. And I remember after going home after my first class, it was a really ridiculous thing to say or think, um, but I was, sort of, I was 25, 20, yeah, 25 years old. And I just thought, I came home from doing this class because my, my whole childhood was very, um, I was very much in the shadow of my brother and also I was quite a sickly child, so I wasn't expected to live beyond 10. And, and so no, nothing was expected of me. And suddenly I'd found that taking a slimming and good grooming class, which is what it was called then, was something that my customers enjoyed and I loved. Um, and it, it was obviously such a fantastic success. And I remember that in the second week, people came back and they'd all lost weight and brought new members and what have you. And I thought, wow. This is really exciting. I wonder if one day I might be on This Is Your Life. <laughs> How silly was that? But, you know, I don't forget that. Because at the time, that programme was so important. It was one of those, it was the time of, I mean, when television was, it might not even have been four channels, you know, but it was, if it was four, it was no more than four. Um, and every program was priceless, and so uh, it was. It was really special. So I loved that program. I watched it every week. But when yeah, I was on, and I, I did, I did recall thinking that, and I must have thought, "What? How big-headed must I have been to think that back then? That was just so funny." But from my point of view, I, I feel very privileged that I was on This Is Your Life because it's not there now. And afterwards, I wrote a, a, quite a long letter to Michael Aspel, thanking him for being so utterly lovely and for handling everything so beautifully. And, and he, he, what a charming man. He, was ju he is just, just fantastic. And I'm so, I was so grateful to him. I really, really was. And he wrote the loveliest letter back. So he thought he was going to frame my letter. <laughs> it's the most exciting thing anybody, I believe, can ever do. I did do Dancing on Ice later, and that was very, very exciting. Uh, but that was nervous when it was dangerous and all of those things. When you do something like, this is your life, it's so affirming from everybody. You, you, you are given so many strokes by everybody. Uh, it is just gorgeous. And I will remember it for the rest of my life. And I'm so grateful to Thames Television as it was then, who recorded it, Michael Aspel for making it such an absolutely joyous occasion. And all the people who contributed, it's, it's just magnificent. So I feel very honored that it was in the time of my life 
that this is your life was still going. And I feel hugely fulfilled by the fact that I was on it.